Daniel chapter 6, reading from the New International Version. Appreciate all you who worked so hard to see the kids come together. I love God. You love God. All right, Daniel chapter 6, you all there? We've been doing a series on honor. We talked about how honor starts in the home. And we talked about honor passing on to the next generation. And so we continue in the series on honor, the third message in the series tonight, Daniel chapter 6, verse 1. And it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel was Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. Couldn't find anything wrong the boy was doing. You can find no corruption in him. Pretty contrary to today's politics. Missed a great place to say amen. amen. Because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we'll never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So, the, so these administrators and tra- satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. Royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce a decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. How many remember Daniel in the lion's den? Now your, majesty issued, now your majesty issued the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. So the king Denarius, Darius pardon me, put the decree in writing. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God just as he had done before. And these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days anyone who prays to any God or human being except you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Verse 13. And they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of your exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. Everybody say that. He still prays three times a day. And when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed, and he was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. When the men went as a group to King Darius and said, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the, decree, so the king gave the order. And they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring. And the ring of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. And when he came near the den, he called, Daniel, in a distinguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lion's? And Daniel answered, may the king live forever. (laughs) May God, my God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions. They've not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I 
ever done any wrong before you, O Majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted his God. No wound was found on him because he had trusted his... Let me run it through one more time. No wound was found on him because he trusted... Yes, he did. Verse 24. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. My goodness. And King Darius wrote to all the nations and the people in every language on the earth, I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. Oh my gosh, that's so good. For he is the living God and he endures forever. His king will not be destroyed. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lion. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. My goodness, let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're going to do tonight. Move in power. Give us living understanding. Speak to us, your people, O oh God, as you're so gracious to do. Release all that's in your heart. May we never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Again, we've, we're in a series on honor. And the reason that we're in a series on honor is that honor in our culture has been seemingly stomped out. And uh, I've, I've found many people uh, in our culture here in the church, I'm, I'm a pastor. Uh, the reason we call me Pastor Daniel is not because I need a pat on the back or some accolade. Or I don't need some title. But we honor the office of pastor, and that's why we do that. So I've had people say, can I just call you Daniel? And the answer is no. When I introduce myself many times when I'm out in the community, I just introduce myself as Daniel. It kind of depends. But, but here I'm Pastor Daniel. Why is that? Because it honors the office of, of pastor, and it, and, it, and it gives honor to who we are and what God's doing. It's not about an, an ego thing. And if you're really offended by that, then go ahead and call me by my first name. Everybody else will probably hate you, but it'll be all right. All right? I'll I'll still love you. You can call me Daniel if you want to. You'll have people around you thinking that you're weird, but but you can still come and it'll be okay. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. We honor, (laughs) thank you, minister. We're learning to honor. And many times uh, across our nation, I see such dishonoring things happen. Very rarely are men opening doors for women. Very rarely is, are government officials honored. And you say, well, that's because there's so much corruption. Listen, you're still supposed to honor. You say, well, how can I honor someone who's not honorable? Simple. You're an honorable person, and you're able to honor people because they're made in the image of God. Based upon that alone, you're able to honor everybody. Anybody in prison, you're able to honor anyone. Anyone that breathes, you can honor because their angels see the face of God every day, and you're an honorable person. So we've been talking about that Daniel, this text, very familiar story, but a closer look reveals, it reveals political intrigue, it reveals racism, it, re- it, it reveals religious intolerance and how bad laws hurt good people and, and many other themes. Daniel, as we look at this, is probably about 80, 80 something years old, he's in his 80s, he's, he's an elderly man, he's in his 80s. He's elevated to one of three administrators in the empire there, and he's got plans. It says he he was so excellent in all that he did that they they had plans to make him over the whole thing, but that hadn't happened yet. And so there's those who were jealous and those who were prejudiced and those who were racist looked on him and said, man, we got to do something. This guy's getting ahead of us. We got to do something. We got to fix him. And so they set up this scheme. They... They had this plan to have Daniel killed. I mean, it's, it's corrupt. It's, it's not unlike, I think, what happens today. They planned to have Daniel killed by breaking the law. Now, they knew that, he could, that the only way they could find him is by finding something wrong with, with him serving God. If they could make his serving the Lord illegal, then they could have, arrest him. They, they could have him arrested. Many of you don't realize that 
in, in some states already, if you speak against same-sex marriage, it's considered a hate crime, and you can actually lose your 501c3 license, so they're threatening. No, it's not happened just yet, but there is hate crimes that are coming down to you as a pastor or as a believer. If you declare that, you can be considered a hate monger and actually have, um, have laws that have been already made against you for that. Wow. And so their plan was to have Daniel killed by breaking the law. And they, they have a law invented that they knew he would break. And it's the one they knew who he'd break. They knew he would be a worshiper no matter what they did. They knew that he would pray no matter what. He had such a reputation. I mean, all these years brought to, brought to Babylon as a young man, one of the exiles of Judah, brought to Babylon. They knew that he was a praying man. How'd they know that? They saw him pray. They saw him live for the Lord. They saw him stand. They saw him with the handwriting on the wall and, and all of that. I mean, all of his life is before them. And they knew, well, we're going to get him caught there because he ain't going to change his, he's not going to change his devotion. He's not going to turn his back on his God. And Denarius, Darius, pardon me, out of his, out of his pride and shortcomings, yields to this scheme. He's like, oh, yes, everybody should worship me. What a great idea. No, not a good idea, Satan. No. And so Daniel's response to the new law. Now we talked about authority recently. And there's realms of authority. Anytime government sets a law in order that breaks God's word, there's a higher law in effect. And the higher law is God's word. So if they tell you, you can't read the word, you can't practice your Christianity, you go right on and practice and read and live it. And there might come a day where that takes place, where it's illegal to have the hate book. Oh, you should hear the stuff that's coming out of California. And it's, it's really shocking. Or maybe it's not so shocking. It's been going that way a long time. Daniel's response to the new law is to run straight up to his prayer room, throw the window out and throw the window open towards Jerusalem and like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He just starts praying. I mean, he's not nervous about anything. It doesn't seem. He doesn't flinch. He prays three times a day. How many times? Three times a day. A Jew would pray twice a day. He added a prayer meeting. Jews prayed twice a day, not three times. So when it says he prayed three times a day, he says, oh, can't pray? Why don't you stick it? I'm adding a whole other prayer meeting. Not sure what stick it would be in Hebrew, but anyway, he, his response is to go up and pray. That was his custom. That was his habit. That was what he did. Daniel keeps his habit of praying before the open window that faced Jerusalem. And the reason he faced Jerusalem is comes right from the dedication of the temple and the promise of the Lord that if, if my people who are far away or exiled will turn towards Jerusalem and pray. See, they believed their prayers would go towards Jerusalem and when they would hit the temple, it would go up in the incense straight to God. That was the idea. And so he, that's why he would face Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, not two times. He added a prayer meeting. The question, or the key question is this. Why didn't Daniel stop praying for 30 days? I mean, what's the big deal? You could just stop praying for 30 days, can you? That's not what he does. It's not what he does. He's a covenant man. We're talking about honor. We're talking about honoring God. I won't tell you one of the greatest things you can do to, to release honor in your life is be somebody that honors God apart, above all else. And Daniel was a man who was in covenant relationship with the living God. He was a covenant man, and he wasn't about to start breaking his covenant now. You know what we need to be? We need to be covenant men and women. We need to keep our word. May our word be our bond. May your handshake and your word mean something. Amen. You remember that? Guys, you remember that? The, those of an older generation, my word's my bond. A handshake, you never even had to have a contract if you shook a hand with a, an honorable person. There are still people like that. But we need to return to that. That's a, that's a covenant man, a, a covenant woman that keeps his word, even when it's painful, even when it might mean that he's going to be in trouble. And so he was a, a covenant man. He was, his praying was an act of honoring God. He's declaring that God alone had power to change things. I don't know what you're facing today, but if you learn to honor God through a steady, consistent prayer life, God will honor you. 
And if you'll learn to cry out to God, if you'll learn to intercede, you'll learn to spend time in His presence, you'll learn to spend time in His Word, if you'll develop a culture in your family of prayer, that I'm telling you the family that prays together stays together. The, the marriage that prays together stays together. You've got to cultivate that. You've got to let it be part of the very fabric of your life. That's a quote from Dr. Morocco. Prayer has got to be part of the fabric of our lives. The very fabric of who we are. And that's what Daniel was. He, was, he knew that God alone could change things. And he said, well, I'm not going to break my covenant with you. I'm going to up the ante at a prayer meeting. And I'm going to pray and ask that God, you deal with this. Deal with these guys. Deal with this. His trust was in God, not man. If his trust was in man, he'd been praying in secret. I'm not saying that all those that are in, in you know, countries that are persecuting Christians should just throw open the windows and pray. But that's what he felt led to do. We need to be a people that prayer, whether you're being persecuted or not. And I will tell you, hear stories about, hear stories about those who are persecuted. It is absolutely amazing. Again, I would encourage you to get Fox's Book of Martyrs. Some of you don't know what that book is. I'd encourage you to go buy it. Every Christian ought to have in their library Fox's Book of Martyrs. That's what it's called, Fox's Book of Martyrs. You think your life's difficult and painful? Well, I'm sure it is on a certain level. But just get that book out and read a few chapters, and then you'll start shouting because you haven't resisted to the point of shedding blood yet. Neither have I. God's on the throne. You ain't being burned at the stake yet, are you? All right, then it's going to be okay. Come on, God's going to bring you through. Come on, thank you, Jesus. I mean, sometimes we think we're persecuted because we had a little Christian fish on the back of our vehicle, and somebody cut us off and flipped us a single finger salute. You think you're being persecuted because you're a Christian sign in the back of your vehicle. The way I drive, I don't put a Christian stickers on the back of my truck. I don't want to be a bad witness. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Half choking. Now his trust was in God, not man. And prayer was the key to his success. God elevated him. And he was, he was just about in charge of everything before the attack came. God elevated him because he was a man, a covenant man, a man of prayer. God will elevate you if you pray. If you pray continually, I'll continue releases of God's power and presence in your life. Prayer honors God. Prayer honors God. Everybody say that. Prayer honors God. His praying expressed that his highest allegiance was to God. Who's your highest allegiance to? Listen, I am a Christian first and foremost, and then after that, I'm a United States citizen. I'm not a United States citizen and then a Christian. I'm a believer and part of the kingdom of God, and then I'm, uh, and I'm, a, I'm a patriot through and through. I love the United States of America, but I'm not putting the United States laws above. The, the day, God, may it never come, the day the United States starts making laws that are contrary to the word of God, I will not obey them. I refuse to obey that which I can't. I can't do it. God, God ordains authority and puts governments in place, but they need to be, listen, you need to be party to, uh, to, to our government. You need to vote. You need to pray. You need to get involved in the political process. If you don't like what's happening, maybe you should sharpen your pencil and get in the game. Come on, maybe some people should run for county, for, you know, for the city council, and people should run for offices. Thank God for, for Mayor Edna and your wonderful husband, you anointed couple, you. God bless you. Not, I, I, as I was praying and reading and studying this, you know, I'm, I'm, I know that you're in that prayer meeting over in Palmer. You know how much that blesses me? Pentecostal Holy Ghost prayer meeting. Yeah, the mayor's in it. And if you don't like it, well, that's between you and God. But the mayor of Palmer is in a prayer meeting. I don't know if it's every day, but I mean, you're there. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's people that don't think that's so cool. I promise you there's an atheist in the back 40 somewhere and ain't too happy about mayor praying. But, but, but this mayor, and uh, along with Daniel, and God wants to raise us up to do the same thing. That put God first, and his allegiance was to the Lord before anything. Prayer was the key to his success. His praying expressed his highest allegiance to God. All right, what's the result of him praying? Well, there's amazing results. God intervened in his situation, and his life was spared. The king has a fast that night. Darius, the king, fasts. He doesn't eat. He doesn't sleep. I think he's praying. Oh, God, if you're real, please save it. 
And Daniel goes into the lion's den, and the lions are fasting that night. There's a beautiful picture. I, I think I'd like to get a copy of it hanging in my house. It's a, it's a beautiful picture of Daniel in his 80s. With his, it's an oil painting, and he, he's standing with his hands behind his back. And he's looking up to heaven and there's like this light that's shining on him. And there's all these nice little pussycats all around him. Little kitties, Pastor Alex. Kitties. These little kittens. They're all just hanging out. And he just sits there. Wait, can you imagine? I've seen some amazing miracles. Have you seen amazing miracles? I've seen some amazing miracles. I've seen multiplication of food. I've seen, I've seen blind eyes open. I've seen deaf ears unstopped. I've, I, I've been places where I, I, I remember seeing somebody so touched by the Lord many years ago, and I saw them roll up a set of stairs and roll down a set of stairs. They got touched by the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit rolling up the stairs and down the stairs. There, I think there's seven steps. It's, it was in Maui. There's seven steps that go up to the platform. It's, it's quite a high, uh, it's a high platform. He would roll up seven steps and down seven steps for 45 minutes. Now, I don't care what kind of core workout you have. You try rolling upstairs for 45 minutes. You, 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 come on. Some of us couldn't do it right now. We're talking, we're talking supernatural. Supernatural rolling up. He said, what did that mean? I don't know. It meant a lot to him. I saw him get off the ground, change his life. The guy was never the same. That doesn't mean anything. Somebody roll up and down the stairs. I don't know. Didn't mean anything to me either. But that guy got up. He was a jerk before he got touched. And afterwards, I thought he was sweet. He was a nice guy after that. We've been going on to follow the Lord. And come on, he got delivered of being a mean-spirited cuss. Amen. By rolling up and down the stairs. I don't know what the rolling up and down the stairs were. But I'm telling you, there's miracle power available for you. There's, God can turn your situation around. He can heal the sick. He can set the captives free. He can set the meth addict loose from the bondages of all of those demons. He can heal your marriage. He can heal your kids. Come on, my God's an awesome God. And He can shut the mouth of lions. But if you don't have a prayer life, if you don't... Rely on, lean on, make him your highest allegiance and abide in him, then you might not see that kind of a miracle. I'm thankful for the grace of God. But Daniel had a prayer life and God intervened in his situation and his life was spared. Could it be that you might find yourself in a situation that your life will be spared if you honor God? Then again, as we said this morning, don't be afraid of. The one who can, you know, don't be afraid of man. Fear God. Listen, death is not the last thing. Don't be afraid of death. I'm not afraid of death. I'm going to do the right thing. If it ends up we get martyred for it, glory to God, you get a bigger reward. Thank you, Jesus. There might be a little pain for a moment and then glory that will far exceed whatever you just experienced. Martyrdom, the gift that you give once. His enemies were removed. His enemies were removed. His enemies were no more. He prospered. I'm going to tell you, if you serve God and you honor God through a prayer life, He'll deal with your enemies. He'll make you to be at peace even with your enemies. He's set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He will turn things around. He, come on, he'll, he'll, he'll cause them to love you or be removed. I've prayed that prayer before. That's a great prayer. In fact, the truth is, I've never, seen, I've never seen that not work. Where you're in a situation with somebody, and they are really causing pain in your life and lives of others. I've seen it with neighbors. I've seen people living next to other people that are so mean and so evil and so vile. And they call me and they say, Pastor, what am I going to do? I said, we're going to have a prayer meeting. We're going to pray. We're going to stand there. We're going to reach our hands towards them. We're going to ask God to intervene. And we're going to bless them. And every time you go past their house, I want you to bless them. I want you to reach your hands towards them and say, Oh God, thank you. Save them. Intervene. I bind demon power. God, I ask that you would touch them. And you pray through. And when you're done praying through, then, and, and it hasn't changed yet, then pray this prayer. God, remove them or change them. And I'll tell you what will happen. They'll either be gone or they'll be changed. And, and, and I've found the Lord gives me time frames. 
So when I'm praying that, I'll be, I'll be wanting to pray, Lord, remove him or change him like tonight. Except usually what comes out is, Lord, remove him or change him in the next 90 days. You know, I, I can't think I can handle 90 days, but spirit-led, you know. But I, I usually ask the Lord to do something. And either, either he intervenes miraculously, removes them, changes them, or I'm removed. The whole situation's changed. Listen, prayer changes things. Prayer will deal. You know, we warn not against flesh and blood. The enemy is not your ex-wife. Come on, somebody say amen. The enemy is not your ex-husband. The enemy is not your spouse. The enemy, the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Your enemy is not a person. We war not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. This is a principality that's operating here in Daniel 6. Still trying to kill God's people. Prince of Persia still operating. Still operating in the same region. Wow. Enemies were removed. Daniel prospered. And God was glorified. All right, in application tonight. In application tonight, Satan will attempt to stop you from praying. He's going to try to stop you. I've had an ongoing... um, what would I call it, an ongoing challenge to keep myself in a place of prayer. You see, as I study and I, and I, I listen to testimonies and I'm involved in a culture of prayer, we've created that way, then prayer stays alive in my... It's much easier now that I'm getting a little older. Not a lot older, just a little older. When I was younger, I, I, I didn't really have so much of a revelation for prayer. But as I've grown up in the Lord and still I've got, I'm still got a ways to go, feel like a teenager. Anybody feel like a teenager in the Lord? Come on, we just got glory to God. Lord, change us. Help us, Lord. Oh, hell me, God. I've found that a prayer life that you will not back off of, have a prayer commitment. What is it? And don't move it. Set it, set, set a lifetime pattern, a lifetime a lifetime pattern. This is when I pray. And get up and do it. And I, I would encourage you to do it in the morning. Why? Because I don't know. There's something about the morning. Some of my greatest prayer times are at night. But there's something about getting up in the morning and ordering your day. About giving God the first fruits. Waking up in the morning, the first thing. Listen, I challenge you. First thing in the morning, don't grab your phone and look at the news. Don't, don't grab your phone and look at the, 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 the latest snap. Don't, don't grab your phone and the lady, look at the latest tweet. Come on, you open your eyes, start doing this. Open your eyes and say, oh God, I love you. And exp- the first, I challenged myself for years, and I still do it. The, I try to, the first sound that comes over my vocal cords that comes out of my mouth. Jesus. I, I, I've been doing that for years. Before, long before I met Pastor Karen, I'd wake up and I had this thing. I'd wake up and say, my Lord, my God, my King, my everything, I love you. It's the first thing I would come out of my mouth. I think I'm going to start doing that again. I did it for, I did it for a decade plus. And I don't know, got, got away from it. Now I just say Jesus. It's like the shortcut or something. I think I'm going to say, oh, my Lord, my God, my King, my everything. Jesus, I worship you. I'm getting back to that. Develop a lifestyle of prayer. Develop it. You say, well, I don't want to. Yeah, that's your flesh. The flesh doesn't want to get up and go to early morning prayer. The flesh doesn't want to get up an hour and a half earlier before you have to because you're tired from playing Xbox and watching Netflix all night. Why don't you just back off some of the Netflix? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Come on, Jesus. Back off of some of that. Come on, let's go with some of that. Get to bed a little earlier. Get up earlier and start praying. Well, I said, I can't get down to the church for morning prayer. Okay, then have your own prayer time at home. He said, I've I've got to drive. We'll leave early and go to the Eagle River prayer meeting. Amen. Develop prayer. Satan will try to stop you. And if he can stop you, then you will not have the results that Daniel had. I want to have results like that. I I want to be used in the government. Did I just say that? I did. I did. I want to be used in the government. What does that mean? I don't know. Ha! 
Hallelujah. But I want to be used to bring his kingdom in every area of our culture and life. Don't you want that? Well, you'll never have that happen unless you pray. If you don't develop a prayer life, some people want more power, more anointing. Let me just tell you, if you don't use the power and anointing that you have already, what makes you think that he's going to give you any more? He's not going to give you any more. He's a good steward. If you're, not, if you're wasting the, the drop of oil that you do have, why would, he give you a whole, why would he give you a whole bunch more oil, power, if you're not using what you already have? You know that people have authority when they walk in authority, when they pray with authority, when they use their authority. Somebody can say they have authority, and if they never use it, they don't really have any. God intervened in his situation because he prayed. Satan will try to stop us from praying. We must see prayer as the key to living life as God intended. God, why, I mean, study the life of Jesus. Scholars say six hours of his day was prayer. I don't know how they figured that out. I tried to figure it. I couldn't figure how they figured it. But that's a pretty long prayer time. He said, well, I, I, don't have, I don't have time to pray. No, 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 no. You should not have time for something else. You should make time to pray. If you want the release of, you want this kind of stuff, you want lions shutting their mouth, you want your enemies removed, you want God to prosper, you want God to elevate, you pray. You don't want that, don't pray. It's pretty simple. You want results, biblical results, and you've got to get it the biblical way. And the biblical way to get results is to pray. And when you pray, you're honoring God. In our families, as, as fathers, as mothers, we have, to, we have to model what it is to pray. You've got to teach your kids to pray. And teach them to pray the Word. We must make prayer the very fabric of our lives. Let me challenge you. I didn't preach long to you on this Sunday night. Let me challenge you. Where are you at with your prayer life? Is your prayer life honoring God? And honestly, if you pray for three minutes, that's honoring God. It's better than nothing. If you pray over your food, I'm really glad. That's a wonderful start. And I'm not mocking. That's great. Pray for your food. Amen. Do you know they say that prayer over food actually changes the molecular structure of it? Somebody showed me some results. I thought, what? And then, who is it, Leila? Where's Leila? You in here? Leila, Leila showed me years ago a book about water. Do you remember that? A book about water and how vibrations affect water. Do you know that milking cows, 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 do you know cows produce 20% less milk when they listen to rock and roll music? Did you know that? No, they, they, they've shown that when you listen to Mozart, that, that, that something happens in your mind. Now, I don't, I don't understand that. All I know is God said, let there be light, and there's light. I know that God says stuff, and we're, we're in a voice-activated kingdom, and prayer can be meditative, but I will tell you, corporate prayer, biblically speaking, is out loud. It's an out loud thing. And so it's important for you to learn to pray and pray out loud, to teach your kids, to pray with your wife, to pray with your husband. Come on, pray with anybody that will agree with you to pray. If you will pray, you'll honor God, and you'll see Daniel-like results. If you don't pray... Well, that's just flat out the devil and your flesh and the world. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on, stand up on your feet all across this place. If you're praying over your food, wonderful. If not, why don't you start and then, and then challenge yourself. Come on, let the first words coming over your vocal cords in the morning, let them be something of worship unto God. Come on, lift your hands and just examine your heart. Where are you in your prayer life? Does your prayer life honor God? Are you praying? Or are you yielding to your flesh? Come on, ask God to quicken you right now. Holy Spirit, we pray. Oh, help us. God, won't you help us? Oh, hallelujah. Let me, let me say this to you. My wife prays more than just about anybody I know. And it's not that she's, you know, not doing anything. She's a worker. My wife is a diligently hard worker. But she has prayer throughout all of her. I mean, if you, if you were to take a, a video capture of what's going on in my house during all of her activities of what she's doing, she's praying in tongues over every laundry basket, over all the different stuff that she does around the house. She's, she's praying in the Spirit when she's driving. She's praying in the Spirit when she's shopping. She's constantly praying in the Spirit. Come on, that's the kind of wife you want to have. Hallelujah. 
Every time I look at her, you think she's talking to herself? No, she's talking to God. She's speaking mysteries to God. God's spirit praying right through me. Come on, challenge yourself to pray without ceasing, but challenge yourself to develop. Mark a time during the day, every day. When are you going to have, when is your meeting with God? Get your Bible out, get a journal out, and spend time in prayer. And invariably, when you start doing that, you'll start remembering all the stuff that you didn't remember, and now you have to do that. And then, and then you'll be like, oh, no, wait. And then I'm just going to do, no, just make a list. Just write it down. Make a list of all the stuff. Oh, yeah, I have to do this. Up, oh, yep. Yeah. I have to do that. And keep praying. And soon your list, you'll be like, I'm doing that later because I'm praying for an hour. And you stay there. And you can, you, or, or 15 minutes. Listen, let the Holy Spirit lead you. It's like a muscle. It gets stronger and stronger. And, and let me say this offensive thing. If you don't like praying, there's something wrong. If you don't like spending time with the Lord, then we, we need to help you in your discipleship. That's why we have foundation classes. That's why you, you, you got to learn to grow in the Word. If, if there's a blockage, listen, if you don't feel accepted by God, you certainly don't want to spend time with Him. If you don't feel that God is for you, maybe you feel like He's some loving slave owner and, and, and you just want to keep your head low so you don't get in trouble, well, then you're not going to want to spend time with Him. You're not going to talk to Him if you think He's angry. You're not going to spend time with Him if you're feeling convicted. You got to learn about repentance. You got to learn about the blood. You got to learn about who Jesus is. You got to learn about, come on, all of those things are foundational. So if you don't want to spend time in prayer, I mean, I had somebody tell me, I mean, I, I'm talking saved for 40 years, tell me this. Ah, oh, I don't like prayer meetings. I said, You don't like prayer meetings? How come? He said, Ah, oh, they're so boring. I thought, Holy cow. Okay, that, that's an admission of his lack of growth as a Christian and I'm not condemning him I'm just saying oh God if prayer is boring for you here let's read a boring prayer meeting let, let, let's just look at something for a second just for a second I didn't preach long so I can kind of mess around a little bit look at this with me here just be seated for a second we're almost done turn to the book of Revelation Yes, I'm committed to pray. I'm committed to fast. I'm committed, Lord. Oh, where is that? Book of Revelation. I'll paraphrase it. Ah, Revelation 4. After this I looked and before me was a door standing open in heaven and the voice I first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit. This is a prayer meeting. <laughs> prayer meeting. See many times you don't have anything happening in prayer because you have no expectation and your faith has been blunted. permitting can you imagine if you're like come to seek the Lord oh God maybe tomorrow morning and you hear good morning and all of a sudden whoo, you see a door and the same voice says why don't you come up here okay <laughs> prayer meeting Come on, instead of, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray to your Lord my soul to keep, and if I die before I wake, come on, come on. There's some better prayers you should have over your kids instead of giving them nightmares like that. Come on, just lift your hands. Ask God to help you. Oh, we commit for the rest of our lives to be people of prayer. I want to ask you, between now and the end of the year, if you will commit to be in morning prayer between now and the end of the year, I don't care how many times a week, whatever, you come to morning prayer, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., or 7 a.m., you commit to morning prayer. You're willing to do that. You're saying, I'm going to commit myself. I'm going to commit myself to morning prayer from now to the end of the year. 
I want you to come stand up here. You want to commit to morning prayer, you're going to do it. I mean, you're going to pray out the rest of the year like Daniel. You're going to contend. You say, I can't do that, Pastor. I'm driving to Anchorage at 5 in the morning. All right. All right, I understand. Can't make it. You can't make it to the, to the prayer meeting because you're, you live on the backside of, of Buffalo Mine Road. And, you know, you, you live out of the Butte or something. But, but you're going to pray. You're going to pray an hour a day. You're committed to do it. Come join us. Come, 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 come. We're going to ask God. Listen, you need a revelation and you need an anointing to do it. And the devil will fight you. He will. See, I, can't, I can't come to the prayer meeting, but I'm going to pray an hour a day. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going to close out the service this way. I'm going to pray an hour a day. Oh, making the devil nervous, all these people committing to pray. We're going to see that building built, I think. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. All right, you're like an hour a day. I just committed to pray over my food. All right, good. Praise God. Look, how many of you can, everybody can increase, you can increase your prayer life. How many of you can increase? All right, that's everybody. If you could increase, come on up here. Come on, let's pray. All right, I know if you're in your, if you're in your seat and you're staying where you're at, that you're backslidden. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, maybe you've got health things or whatever. You just want to stay put. That's fine. It's not a problem. We love you. Praise God. God knows your heart. Amen. Come on, let's all commit. Let's commit ourselves to prayer. Come on, just talk to him. Lord, we commit ourselves to pray like Daniel prayed. We commit ourselves to prayer. We commit ourselves to prayer. Give us an anointing, an enablement, an endowment of power. Give us a revelation, Lord, of prayer. If we could just see (coughs) the power of prayer and what it would do. Lord, we would lift up situations, circumstances, governmental issues. Lord, even tonight, we pray for those 27 that were killed in Texas. Pray for the body of Christ, the church of the living God, to come alive. That prayer would truly be the fabric of part of our fabric of our lives, and you would prosper us and bless us. You'd remove every hindrance. May we be committed to pray all the days of our life, like Daniel would, no matter what, no matter what anybody thinks, no matter what the government might say. We'll be a people of prayer, a habit of prayer. We will honor you because we'll be a people of prayer. Jesus name if you say amen to that amen you agree if you agree say amen put your hands together for God let's close tonight take someone by the hand right where you are we're going to close if you're not right with God give your heart to him won't you come on just connect with somebody all across this place we're done give your heart to Jesus you'll never regret it live for him repent of your sin believe on the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved do it those of you online maybe Amen. We love you. Don't miss Wednesday. And if you'd keep my wife and I in prayer, we're going to be taking a trip. Would you pray for us over the next over the next week and a half or so? Let's, let's thank God for what he did. Lord, thank you for what you've done today. Bless these families. Give us a power-packed week. Breakthrough miracles. Thank you for what you've done. Bless your people. Cause your face to shine upon us. Lift up your countenance towards us. Oh, God, be gracious to us. Keep us. Give us peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord.